Leave insert higher level maths 2024. This is the solution video to paper one, question nine. So let's jump into it. Question nine, a sphere has radius of or units. The part of the sphere that is cut by a flat surface is called a cap. Here's the cap here. And we, we are given the volume of the cap. C is equal to pi k squared over three times three or minus k. Here, C is the volume of the cap, K is the height of the cap, with K being between 0 and OR. Find the value of C, the volume of the cap, when OR is equal to 13 and K is equal to 4. So, just subbing in 4 and 13 into our formula there, that C is equal to pi times 4 squared over 3 times 3 times 13 minus 4. And pop it into your calculator, you get C is equal to 560 pi over 3. It says give your answer in terms of pi, so we need to do that. And that's worth 5 marks. Part B, a different sphere has a radius of 8 units uh, and a cap with a height of y units. Uh, y is between 0 and 8. The volume of this cap is 36 pi y units squared. Use this and the expression for C above to show this expression here. So I'm going to sub in um, <coughs> C is given as 36 pi y. So 36 pi y goes in for C and then pi uh, equal to pi k is y this time. So it's y squared over 3 times 3 times the radius is 8 uh, minus uh, y, like that. And then we just simplify it till we get this here. Well, pi cancels with pi, y cancels with the y squared. So I get 36 is equal to y over 3 times 24 minus y. And that's what I have. It's just the opposite sides. So that's y over 3. Is equal to 20, uh, times 24 minus y is equal to 36. And that is worth five marks. Part two, multiply out and solve the equation to find the height of this cap. So I just need to multiply out the brackets and solve for y. Uh, I can start by multiplying everything by three to get rid of the fraction so that it'd be, uh, and then I might multiply by the y as well at the same time, just on that side. So uh, multiplying by three y, there I get 24 y minus y squared. And on this side, 36 multiplied by three is 108. So you get a quadratic equation. I'm just gonna get everything to one side and have my leading coefficient positive. So that'd be y squared minus 24 y plus 108 is equal to zero. Factors of that are y minus six and y minus 18. So that gives me two values of y equal to six and y equal to 18. We can't accept y equal to 18 because the radius has to be less than eight. So the height of the cap is six. Part C. A hemisphere has diameter of x centimeters. Um, v of x, the volume of this hemisphere in centimeter cube is given by v of x is equal to pi over 12 x cubed. Find the value of x when the volume of this hemisphere is three liters and uh, give your answer correct to one decimal place. So volume is equal to that. So that's pi over 12 x cubed is equal to three liters, the volume. Um, and it's in centimeters, cubic, uh, cubic centimeters rather. So I'm going to put it as 3000 cubic centimeters rather than three liters. So if we want to go and solve for X, we would divide by pi over 12 and we would take the cubed root. So I can say X is equal to the cubed root of 3000. Uh, dividing by pi over 12 is the same as multiplying by 12 over pi. So say times 12 over pi. 
and you can pop that into your calculator to get x is equal to 22.5. So that is worth 15 marks. The one above, I forgot to say, was worth 5 marks. So part D, the volume of the hemisphere is increasing at a constant rate of 450 centimeters, uh, cubic centimeters per second. Find the rate at which the diameter x of the hemisphere is increasing with respect to time when x is equal to 20. Give your answer in centimeters per second, correct to one decimal place. And remember that the volume of the hemisphere is given by this formula here. So it's a rates of change question. We have, first of all, the volume of the hemisphere is given to us. Uh, the volume is increasing, that is dv dt, uh, that's equal to 450. We're looking for the rate at which the diameter is changing, so that is dx dt. So dx dt, using our rates of change formula, you split up dx and dt. And then you have a look, what else do we have? What goes in here and here? Well, we've just said that we have dv dt. So that means stick dv there, dv dt, and you have to stick dv there as well. So we have dv dt, it's that. We need to find dx dv. So dx dv, do we have anything that relates v and x? We do. We have v of x is equal to this. So v is equal to pi over 12 x cubed. If we differentiate that, we get dv dx is equal to... Uh, 3 multiplied by pi over 12 is pi over 4, so that's pi over 4 x cubed. Now we're looking for dx dv, we have dv dx, so we need to invert this. So I'm just going to rewrite it carefully as pi x cubed over 4, because when I invert that to get dx dv, I get 4 over pi x cubed. So 4 over pi x uh, squared rather, and is obviously supposed to be squared when I differentiate that. Um, 10 extra marks if you notice that mistake. So then that's dx dv and that goes in here. So I can find now dx dt. That's equal to dx dv which is 4 over pi x squared times 450 and then I want that at x equal to 20 so that gives me 4 over pi times 20 squared times 450 and type that into your calculator and you'll get 1.4 centimeters per second and that's worth 10 marks. Onto part E, so a cone has radius four centimeters and a height of h centimeters. The curved surface area of the cone S can be written as S is equal to pi or times the square root of four squared plus h squared. Rearrange this to write h in terms of S or and pi and give your answer in this form where a, b and n are constants. So we start off with S is equal to pi or times the square root of or squared plus h squared. Well, the first thing I need to do is get rid of this square root sign. So I'm going to square both sides. If I square s, I get s squared. If I square this side, I'll get pi squared or squared, and then I'll get times or squared plus h uh, squared. Next thing then that I'm going to do is try to get um, h on its own. Here's h, so I'll divide by pi squared or squared, so s squared over pi squared or squared is equal to or squared plus h squared. Uh, and then take away or squared from both sides and get h squared on its own. I'm just going to put the h on this side and work on the right hand side. So h squared is equal to s squared over pi squared or squared and then minus or squared. Um, I can write this then as one fraction before I go 
taking the square root. So h squared is equal to s squared minus r squared times the denominator. So times pi squared r squared over pi squared r squared. Now I have it written as one fraction. Take the square root of both sides. So the square root of h squared is h. The square root of this, um, like this, the square root of this whole thing here gives me on the top the square root of s squared minus or to the power of 4 pi squared. Um, or you can put the pi squared first, pi squared, or to the power of 4, because they want a or n. And that is over the square root of pi squared or squared is pi or. So that is the final form that they're looking for. We have the square root of s squared minus a or to the power of n over b or. So a is pi squared. Um, b is pi and um, s is there as well. So we have h on its own and that is worth 10 marks. So if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.